Merry Christmas everyone and welcome to my new video. Today after a short period of black and white printing I will go back to the color. So let's heat up to 35 degrees and choose the negative what I will print. For today I have a print from the summer and this print is from Kodak 200 which I developed in the mass batch development last time. And because it's 35mm film, I need to adjust my frames and I also need to change the lens. I'm also curious how my modes for the enlarger works and if I see less light leaks from the sides of the enlarger. So let's load the negative, clean up everything from the dust and start make a test print. But first let's switch the lens from 80mm to 50mm and adjust the easel and size of the prints for required size of the paper. Honestly, I like my 80mm lens more because it has a f-stop with a fully closed aperture, so you can easily open it fully and close to the same position what was closed before. But nevertheless, both of the lenses is dirt cheap, and honestly, so far I don't see the huge difference in the quality of these lenses. So let's select the magnification and how I want to see the picture and today I want to print with the borders of the 35mm film so I will adjust from the previous prints margins of the white spaces on the sides of the print to the size of my color paper which I pre-cut before. I still have a huge pile of color paper and I kind of get stuck with the 20 by 25 paper size. So far I really like it, so I have zero regrets and don't really want to switch back to any different size. I will start printing with the neutral settings of 6060 and zero on the cyan channel. As always I am using test printer with the six openings and I will start with the exposure meter, so I will grade from 3 seconds with the plus 1 second on each interval and from there decide which exposure I want to stop with. Let's preheat the drum to 35 degrees also and start development. And for development procedure I'm using Adox chemistry for array 4. And this is basically only concentrates of array 4 chemistry. And before, as you remember, I have zero problems with the longevity of these chemicals. But now it's actually a true test of the chemistry and how long you can keep it in the bottle after use. So I will make one minute development and one minute bleach picks. And this is kind of empirical stuff uh, decided before. In manual it says actually 45 seconds, but I overdevelop it a little bit. I just like look a little bit more and I think sometimes this dilution by default it's not enough to develop all the beauty of the color on the paper. And over the time, if you're using the same chemistry again and again, you're actually depleting a little bit the developer, so I kind of compensate with the time over the period of usage of the developer. For these developments, I'm not really using a stop bath anymore. And for final wash, I just use a plain water and I use 250 milliliters for one minute and after it I open the drum and everything is finished and ready to review. And as you can see my first test print is completely transparently white and it means I don't develop anything. First of all my solution looks totally black and I need to make a new one. And I find out that I have a sediment on the bottom of my developer bottle. Because it's a little bit cold in my room with the dark room. I think the solutions just hit the limit of the solubility inside the water. So I will preheat it a little bit and shake it up to dissolve all the chemicals and start all over again. Working with this solution is pretty straightforward. You just need to pour 50 milliliters and 200 milliliters of water and you get your working solution. What is downside of the solutions? I think they don't really store well and as you saw you have a basically sediment on the bottom and I don't really like not stable chemistry for long storage. But the positive side is actually quite nice because you can easily make the fast solutions if you're using one shot development or if you're not really in the color film and color printing. You can fastly make small amount of solution and just make a 5-10 prints and 
get over with this solution. And today I also want to try one small trick. Because I always have a hard water and all the calcination and junk collecting inside the Yobo, I put the salt for softener from the dishwasher and in the next videos I will probably say if it works and how it works, if it looks good and if it solves problems with the calcination on top of the cylinders and the bottles and all around the Yobo system. I also found some problem with the thermocouple and I also forget to switch on the 120 to 35 switch because I actually tape it back and now it's not leaking light and you completely forget about it. This is one of the downsides of the old style darkroom because everything is actually manual and you cannot save the presets and set up at once and basically start from the scratch from the zero settings what you can preset up. So now with a new developer and new bleach fix and the temperature of 35 degrees, let's start the development once again. It's again one minute of the developer and one minute of bleach fix. And now I completely see the problem because the developer is almost transparent and the old developer in the bottle was totally dark and it even have uh, some sediment in the bottom. And after washing, let's put the contaminated water back in a bottle with the waste, open up the sample and check if they have a good exposures. This is a really good test, at least you can say if your paper is properly developed, for example, you don't really have any strange tint on the whites and you have a full blacks, and it means more or less you have a proper development spectrum. Because I make a small steps with one second, I don't really see huge difference and I will stop in a six seconds of F8. In comparison to black and white paper, color paper extremely sensitive. And also what is really bad, you actually hitting the threshold of the background of the paper, so it means one small LED with the blue light, for example, can make a shadow color or strange tint which you cannot remove from the paper at all and you will think what's actually happening with your film. So just keep it in mind, simple tests always help and you can make a lot of mistakes if you just run up with a big print and try to fix everything on a go. But first of all, because I have no idea what changes I want to see in the prints and because I initially like how the print looks, I will make final size print. Because by the balance, I think this print works really well, but I'm not sure if I want to remove some cyan tint. As you can see, the print's kind of a color balanced. I have a really yellow light because of the lamps on top of the bar. And in the same time, the ceiling actually was this exact color. But now let's talk about the thermocouple problem what I encounter. So the first problem, it's not really corresponding anymore with my calibrated thermometer and I want to fix it. I think the problem is actually the thermocouple is drift and second problem is actually the coating on top is not really chemical stable and it's oxidized a little bit. But the regulator, what I choose, actually have an offset from uh, zero point as far as I remember, but I don't really care how it's calibrated and because it's just a one set point, I just need to figure it out how to make the thermocouple more chemically stable. So I put the lacquer on top and dry it up and make calibration with the coated thermocouple. And from there, I have a more precise thermometer, which I will just use as a standard for the same temperature. So I will just put the temperature with a less resolution to more precise thermometer and just keep it there. And because I have one more significant digit on this thermometer, I can easily calibrate the less precise tool to this one and have zero problems in future. And because it's one point calibration, basically it's just offset of the calibration curve. So let's check which sample I want to make from this picture. I see here a little bit of cyan tint and I think this square will be representative for the cyan channel shift. So I make a sample test with the steps of 10 on the cyan channel only and try to remove the cyan cast from the picture. 
And as you understand, it's not always work, and sometimes I just have a complex picture. First of all, if you by mistake or unwillingly correcting for the color temperature, for example, on the print, you kind of squish together two colors and your color palette is actually will be a little bit flat in the yellow side. Yes, you will remove cyan, but in the same time you're actually removing the color contrast. And on this print, actually, let's see if it's real deal and if I just have color cast from the lamps on the person in the middle of the shot. And yes, if you actually like my content, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers. So let's quickly wash the prints and take a look what results we have at the final print. For the bigger prints, I usually use twice washing, so 250 milliliters once and second time to just rinse off the rest of the solution from the paper. And this is my test print, and on the test print you can see the difference from the first one to the third one, and I think I need something like 25, so in the middle of the second one and the third one. So now let's print the bigger one and let's compare two prints. So far I don't really have a problem with the repeatability of the prints and sometimes I just lose a little bit of exposure because of the old developer but because now it's new I can reuse it multiple times and everything will be fine. So procedure exactly the same, I use 1 minute 1 minute and 1 minute of wash and 1 minute after wash. So let's compare to prints. The first one I think have a little bit more punch in the colors, so it's yes, it's kind of a little bit greenish cyan and yellow in the same time, but you have a lot of variety of colors. But on the second one I think it's a little bit too yellow and it's just major color of yellow. So not sure what I like more, but I really like the texture and the grain of the shots. And as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next time.